Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today we're going to be doing two very different things. We're going to start with an unboxing of new plants from Garden Crossings and then I'm going to be showing you how I'm prepping my amaryllis to go outside to grow for the summer. Okay, so I ordered some plants back in January from um, Garden Crossings. So we're gonna go ahead and go through these plants that I didn't even remember I had ordered and trying to remember why I chose certain ones. So we're gonna go through that and talk about that. And then I have a bunch of amaryllis that I enjoyed over the holidays and they have now been neglected for several months now and they're looking really sad and miserable. So we're gonna go ahead and pot those up to go outside so that they can um, enjoy the sunlight, you know, fill themselves back up with nutrients and then be ready to go for next holiday season. Okay, so let's talk about these plants here. So I ordered these from Garden Crossings back in January. And let me, I guess I'll put this one down here. And um, I forgot that I had ordered them. I had a gift card um, and so our gift certificate. And so I used um, that, which worked, you know, which was nice. Um, I was not sponsored by, I'm not sponsored by Garden Crossings or Proven Winners. So everything I bought, I bought at full price with the exception of, you know, the gift card. And then, so all of these opinions are, are truly my own <laughs> regarding these. I went back and looked at some of the prices and I was a little like, golly, did I really pay that much? Because apparently on some of these plants, I paid like $40, which I'm just kind of a little shocked. Now I've received plants packed by proven winners before. Um, and I've had you know, about 50, 50, um, luck with them. Sometimes they're in really good shape. Sometimes they're not. This is my first time ordering from, um, garden crossings and they do use a similar plant system. These plants are in really good shape. And, um, this actual box was upside down when it came, even though it says this side up. So, um, and they still look really good. They came in yesterday evening. And so I opened up just the box so that they would be able to air out, but I didn't pull the plants out, but they're looking pretty good. So let's pull these out and talk about what they are. All right, you can see all the soil falling out because it was turned upside down by the mail carrier. Okay, I'm really glad these plants showed up yesterday because um, it's raining today. So I did not get to go outside and do all the things that I wanted to do. So this works out really well. And I mean, it's, I, <laughs> I mean, in gardener math, these are free, right? Because I bought them in January, so that doesn't count. So now it's just like I have free plants plants. If you haven't seen that fun stuff on um, social media, it's pretty hilarious. Okay, let's talk about the first one I ordered. This particular variety is called El Nino Chitalpa, and it's known for fragrant blooms, easy to grow, unique orchid-like blooms, and the orchid-like blooms are actually supposed to be really excellent um, cut flowers. This is a shrub, um, so that was something a little bit different for me. Y'all know I don't plant a ton of shrubs. But the idea is that this does go in the backyard, back towards all the troughs to fill in a large, considerably large um, area. I bought the eight inch jumbo pot and apparently I paid $40.99 for it. So it's a little surprise. Now I don't typically see this in my area. So, I mean, I do think that ordering online is really great, especially if you just don't have access to that kind of stuff. But um, I was a little surprised that I paid that amount. <laughs> I don't know, like, what was I doing that day? Y'all know I'm kind of cheap. <laughs> so anyway, um, so basically it says that it can stand up to five to eight feet tall by four to six uh, feet wide. So really large and um, big growth. It is full sun to part shade. It blooms on this year's growth. Be friendly, um, loves but butterflies, love it. Hummingbirds love it. It's known for a cut flower or foliage, drought tolerant, fragrant, native reblooming shrub, which is awesome. And it's described as um, having a more upright mounded shrub, midsummer beautiful lavender purple orchid looking blooms emerge starting at the base 
of the flower cluster and continue to open, creating a full and long blooming flower. Hardy in zones six through nine, likes to be grown in full sun to part sun shades. In cooler zones, you may find that this shrub dies back to the base. Trimming is rarely needed, but if desired, you, we recommend trimming in the spring. Can tolerate poor soil conditions once established and is drought tolerant. So really excited to get this guy going, especially because he's going to be large. And that's kind of something that I've been looking to do more of. Some larger shrubbery in um, the backyard to soften some different areas. And I need to layer in the larger shrubbery so then I can start planting in front of the shrubbery. So I'm kind of looking forward to this one. Okay, so this next one is called Tiny Wine Physocarpus potentially. And as I was looking over this information, when I got the reminder that my stuff was being shipped, and I was like, Oh, I bought these plants. I started looking over the information regarding this plant. And I was like, why, why, why did I buy it? Um, <laughs> it's not hardy in my area. I'm not really sure what I was thinking. Um, so it's a sun loving compact shrub, lovely dark foliage. Um, it has a tiny, or it's known for being very small, so only about three to four feet tall, makes this a nice selection for small gardens. Extra full with small refined burgundy leaves. Dark foliage adds interest to your garden all season long. In the spring, tiny light pink buds spread up here, just waiting to explode into clusters of small white flowers. Um, and only about three to four feet at its maturity. It has excellent resistance to mildew. Um, it is hardy in zones three, five, six, and seven. So I'm like, why did I buy this? Because I live in zone eight. I don't know. I don't know why I bought it. <laughs> it blooms on last year's growth and this year's growth. Uh, be friendly, loves butterflies. Um, it is compact shrub, excellent for cut flower or foliage, deciduous, native, and reblooming shrub. So I think that I'm going to plant it in a container. I think that's what I'm going to do. Plant it in a container. Okay. So I'm thinking that zone eight means it's too hot here for it. Um, it does require, let's see, full sun. And I'm thinking since that it says it's not hardy in zone eight, that it's just too hot here. So I think that I'm going to plant it in a part shade situation if need be, and then um, potentially put it in a container so that I can move it around if needed. But um, I don't know why I bought this. It's, it's a nine bark. I mean, I, I love nine barks, but I'm, I don't know why I bought this particular one. Y'all tell me, why did I buy this? <laughs> but let's go ahead and pull out the other four plants that I ordered. Okay, these are smaller. These are their quart varieties. The deal about buying plants online is I feel like you have to take it with a grain of salt because while the plants might leave the location in really good shape at some time along in the mail carrier, there's a good chance they're going to get beat up. Like this particular, this Dicentra, um, bleeding heart, it, it's beat to heck. I mean, it's got all, every single limb. It's, I mean, it's broken, broken, broken all right, all over. So it's a little bit in rough shape. The other ones look pretty okay. Um, some damage, but not a ton. Um, but yeah, so let's start going through these varieties as well. Now, the main reason for starting any of um, these, this particular order is that I was really wanted to grow Alstroemeria in my um, yard. And Alstroemeria is a, a flower that I have a cut flower I've used in the florist world quite frequently. And it's not necessarily something that's been like highly seeked out in the um, in the gardening world, but I like it for its strong sturdy stems and long blooming flowers. And so I had located some on um, garden crossings that are several different varieties, but I really needed to search because I really needed a tall growing one. So I got this one called, um, it's Alstroemeria Summer Breeze, very long blooming, great cut flower and hardy to zone six. Um, it is, it's a Peruvian lily, a uh, feature striking golden yellow flowers with peach highlights. The dark green foliage has deep purple undertones that are in a perfect pairing with the flowers standing about three to three and a half feet tall and wide. Um, upright habit makes it a great garden thriller. 
Hardy in zones six through nine, um, prefers to be grown in full sun to part shade locations with average to fertile soil. When planted in well draining locations with good um, winter protection, we have seen it over winter in cooler zones as well. Um, so zones, uh, Hardy in zone six, seven, eight, and nine, 36 to 42 inches tall, 30 by 36 inches wide, full sun. Really looking forward to um, growing this and trying this out. It has kind of these like waxy cool leaves, which I really enjoy. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be planted on the side garden. And I think it's gonna be tucked back a little bit towards the brick wall since it does handle um, some heat. So it is gonna be placed in an area with west facing hot sun. You know, maybe this is something that I tuck over in that, you know, shade, or not shade, that side garden area that I just finished up the other day. But I'm pretty sure that that's potentially where it's going to go. If not, it's going to go along the back of the backyard, tucked in among all the troughs at the back. So really excited to give this one a um, try. I paid $22 for it. Okay, the next thing I ordered is a Dicentra or a Bleeding Heart, particularly called Valentine. Now, I obviously placed this order prior to starting um, my uh, Bare Roots. Uh, so I actually have um, a pink Dicentra Bleeding Heart. So, but now I'll have a red one, which is cool too. Um, it has dangling, known for dangling heart feathers, airy look, and great in the shade. So this is actually for the shade garden. It's the old fashioned Bleeding Heart. Um, it is a red, it forms a large clump of green foliage that has arching stems of large red dangling hearts. The flowers last for several weeks, starting in late spring. After putting on a good spring show, Dicentia generally goes dormant until the following spring. In cooler areas with uh, good moisture, you may see blooms lasting well into the summer. Um, and so it is three feet tall by three feet wide, hardy zones three to nine, prefers part, part shade to full shade, um, is uh, bee friendly, hummingbird friendly, and excellent for cut flowers and foliage. So really looking forward to getting that in the ground. It's looking really rough. So my guess is we're not going to really see many flowers at all um, this season. I mean, look at all the, this is just <clears throat> it's in rough shape that we're not going to really see um, many blooms this particular season, but hopefully this time next year, it will be in way better shape and um, I'll be able to have some cut flowers from that. Okay. I had to cut all of that off. Gosh, there's still more broken ones. I don't know. It just, I, it's rough shape. This is rough shape, y'all. Okay. And sure it'll be fine once I get it some fertilizer and get it into the ground. I'm sure it's not going to have an issue at all. Okay, the next variety I picked up is a pulmonaria called Pinka Blue, and I've wanted this for quite a while. I'm sorry, I'm trimming this off as well, cleaning it up. It obviously got flipped turned upside down. Oh, that's from that's uh, from Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I'm such a nerd, y'all. <laughs> flipped turned upside down. Um, so I'm just giving it a little bit of trim. It's kind of be it's pretty beat up as well. But it I really like this look because of the little pink and blue flowers. I thought it was just absolutely beautiful and I thought it would be really great in my shade garden. It's known for great foliage, the pink and blue blooms and early season color. It is a lung wart. Um, it features silvery green foliage with white dots for season long foliage interest, brightening up a dark shade locations. Late spring bubblegum pink buds appear that turn into pear winkle blue flowers. The buds and blooms appear simultaneously creating a flurry of color on the plant, standing about 16 to 18 inches tall, spreading up to 24 inches wide. Um, it's a floriferous bloomer um, with a nice variegated mound. Hardy zones three to nine. The hairy texture of the foliage is deer and rabbit resistant and it is very hairy. The foliage definitely is. So that's kind of cool for those of you who deal with that. It is um, part shade to full shade, bee friendly, hummingbird friendly, cut flower of foliage, although it doesn't get very tall. So I don't know how well that'll really work for cut flower of foliage, but still a very cool, lots of interesting texture plant for this new shade garden. Okay, and then the last one I got is Pink Chablis Lamium. And this is a native sun to shade, deer resistant. I picked this one up because I've seen the darker pinks and the purples, but I haven't seen the light pink available in my area. And I really wanted the light pink. It's known as Spotted Dead Nettle. Um, 
It has a frothy confection of silver and green foliage in highlight is highlighted by cotton candy pink flowers. Um, great for fillers and containers with a wonderful foliage scent. This versatile plant has deer resistant foliage and will grow well in sun or shade. So I could use this in a container on the front porch would be really fun too. It's hardy in zones four through eight. It's about eight to 12 inches tall by one to two feet wide. It can handle full sun, part sun and full shade. Um, and moderate soil moisture can be used as a cut flower foliage, although it is very short, so I can't imagine doing that. So I did pick up this one as well. Now I played almost $30 for shipping. In the end, my total was $200 before my gift certificate. So $200 for six plants. I was a little like, I don't know what I, I you know, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> so at least the gift card helped out a little bit with it. I am crazy excited to have the Alstroemeria or per, uh, Peruvian Lily. This is what I'm super psyched about having. Um, it's something I've wanted for a long time and something I've been really um, searching for, especially with the taller height. So super excited, very excited about the El Nino Desert Orchid over here, I think is or the Ch Chitapa. I'm um, really excited about that one as well because it's going to look gorgeous in the garden. So I will have video, videos coming up of uh, getting a bunch of these planted out. But for now, I'm going to switch over to amaryllis because I started a bunch of amaryllis during the holidays and typically I throw my amaryllis away. But now that amaryllis are getting so much more expensive, I thought I might try my hand at trying to save them throughout the year and then re-bloom them in the winter. So let's get started with that. Okay, one more thing about getting plants in the mail. I wanted to show y'all real quick. Um, once you get them in, one of the first things you want to do is get them into an actual container. And that container, um, it basically something like this, uh, a water reservoir where they can sit and soak up some, uh, some new moisture and then they can settle after being in the um, mail for so long. And that gives them an opportunity like especially this one like I'm pulling out right now, all of its roots are tossed around and exposed. And so it's in a little bit of rough shape. So I'm going to kind of try to nestle its roots back down into um, the pot, make sure that those that are exposed, I'm covering back up. And then um, just like that. And then we'll go ahead and put water into the water reservoir and allow these time to soak up. I'm just going to put these under my grow lights for the time being. I don't want to go stick them outside right away because I don't know how, if they've been exposed at all, um, very much to very much sunlight. So I'll probably go through a hardening off process when I decide it's time to plant these up. All right. So I want to switch my, um, focus to my amaryllis. I grew these over the winter holidays and really enjoy them every year. And typically I just throw them away. And so this year I wanted to see if I could actually save them. And the way I want to go about that is basically pulling them out of the containers they're in currently, planting them up in one large container to go outside on my back porch, allowing them to take in a lot of sunshine and nutrients and then come towards the end of the summer, beginning of fall, then I'll start taking them into a, um, creating a dormant mode for them. So I had planted a bunch of mine up in various containers. Um, including these um, my blue and white stoneware containers i'm trying to pull these out and remember they've got a lot of roots in here so it's a little, little messy this guy is sending up more leaves now i've totally neglected whoa totally neglected my amaryllis bulbs um, so i don't really know what kind of shape they're going to be in if they're going to be, you know, rotted or, you know, what's going to be going on with them. But we got to pull each of them out of their containers here. They have a ton of roots. Wow. I totally thought these would come out a lot easier. Look at that. Wow. Let me get some close-ups for y'all. So I grew three of them in my blue and white pots. And they definitely feel like, I haven't paid attention, they definitely feel a little desiccated, but we'll be able to plump those back up. And then I also grew some 
in some terracotta pots. I'm going to keep my moss because that stuff's expensive. This whole thing's just going to come out. Wow, look at that. So we'll kind of pull these apart some. Just like that. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now I definitely could have just left these in these containers and then just put them outside. Um, but I have plans for specifically these terracotta containers and the blue and white ceramic pictures do not have, um, they do not have any kind of drainage. So I would have made things a little bit difficult as well. As you can tell by like this guy who's in completely rough shape, I'm going to go ahead and just rip off these extra leaves. You can definitely tell that they have been neglected for the last few months. I did water them throughout the season. I just, when spring came, I just got busy and I forgot about them, truthfully. Okay, so we've got all those out. I think that's eight total. So let me show you what container we're going to put them in. Okay, so I got this container from my friend Lisa. I punched some holes in it. I got it from her last spring and she had gotten like, you know, one of those like Christmas baskets where it has like all the holiday flavored goodies and stuff in it. She got it from there. And so she's like, I'm not going to do anything with it. So I turned it into a planter when she brought it for me. So I'm going to repurpose most of all of this soil, probably add a little bit of fresh soil. You don't need tons and tons of soil. Um, see, I wouldn't necessarily have to fill this whole thing up. I am going to go ahead and fill it most of the way up it'll just be easier okay and the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to recharge this soil with plant tone I do want to be able to feed my bulbs and I happen to have a little bit of compost over here so I'm just going to toss that in too just so I can finish up this bag just going to mix all that in all right and then at this point, we're just going to start planting these up. I am going to put all eight of the bulbs in here just because I want them all in one location. I don't want to have a bunch of individual pots. I want to be able to just pick this all up at once and move it if I need to do so. so we're going to get these tucked in and I'm planting them about the same height that I planted them when I planted them in their original containers for the winter, <clears throat> for the winter holidays. So about halfway up on the bulb. And you can pull off some of these dead leaves. Hopefully you don't have a ton of dead leaves like me because you actually watered and took care of yours. <laughs> Forgot there's one more back here. Okay, so we ended up with nine amaryllis bulbs. And y'all, if I don't have to buy amaryllis bulbs this next Christmas season, that would be stinking amazing. Okay, I think they look really good in this. First of all, I have the drainage holes. Everything is planted with the, about the soil coming up about halfway. I could also come in here with the rest of the moss, and I might go ahead and do that spread some of the moss out in this area just to um, help protect the soil from getting too dry. Now these do not like to be overly moist in the first place. So that's something to consider. Um, they don't want to be sopping wet. That will rot the bulb. So we'll put a little bit of this in here to help out a little bit with retention. And then I do have some of my decorative elements still left over. So I think I'm just going to tuck that in there a little bit just for fun because it looks super cute. Okay, so now that I've got them in this container all together in one place to make it easier. Now you don't have to put them all in the same container. You can keep them in the containers that you had them in 
throughout the winter holidays and then just move those containers outside. You can plant these directly into the garden, whatever kind of works best for you. This, since it's my first time trying to do this, this felt easier. This feels like I can pick this up and move it to different places as needed as I learn what the best location is going to be for these in my garden. They do prefer full sun. However, in the beginning right now, they've been inside for months, months, months. So I'm going to go through a hardening off process, putting them outside a little bit at a time before I just put them all out in crazy sun. They are going to be tucked into my back porch where they will get probably four to six hours of sun per day, but then they will get shade, especially in the hottest times of the year. Now I am going to need to be watering these probably about once a week during the hottest times of the year. And I probably need to add a liquid fertilizer to them maybe at least once a month to help these bulbs beef back up. We want the bulbs to work, you know, to use the process um, of photosynthesis and put nutrients down into the bulb so that they will be prepared to rebloom this next season. Okay, so now do I just put these outside and leave them and bring them in in the winter when I'm really ready? No, they need to go through a process that basically fools them into going into dormancy. So pretty much late August into September, I will bring all of these in. I'll probably stop watering them probably mid August, let them start drying up, bring them inside and then what I'll do is I'll um, probably cut back all of the leaves. I won't water them anymore and I'll put them in a nice cool dry location with minimal light, preferably darkness. And you really want it to be about 55 to 60 degrees in that location. I don't really have that in my, <laughs> in my house. So most likely it will just get tucked into a closet of something and mine will probably be at a warmer temp just because that's where I'm at. You know, I don't have a cellar or a basement and my garage in late winter into fall is a hundred degrees you know so the coolest location is going to be inside my house and even that it's going to be at 68 to 70 degrees but that's what I'm gonna go for go with because that's what I have during that time the plant will go dormant um, most likely the leaves will die back um, you won't see a lot going on with it at all and typically it needs to have a dormancy of at least two months up to five months so depending on when you want to pull these out to be utilized during the winter holidays, you can. I love to do amaryllis after Christmas. I think it's really fun because it's a time of the year where I don't have a lot of like fresh things um, out of my house because <laughs> um, obviously nothing's really growing during the winter. So I really enjoy having amaryllis later on in the winter season. So that is an option. But minimum, you would put these into that dark room, dark, dry, cool location for minimum eight weeks. And then after that eight weeks, you'll pull them out and you'll go through the repotting process again, getting them prepared for your holiday season and whatever in whatever containers you would like to have them in. You'll go ahead and put a little bit of moist soil with them when you're repotting them. And then at that time, you won't water them again until you start to see new leaves or new growth coming off of them. At that point, you can continue to water them. It sounds easy. It's all about timing. And y'all know I am known for forgetting um, things that I have. So I'm going to actually set a reminder on my calendar um, telling me about mid-August to stop watering them. I'll bring them in probably the first or second week of September and go ahead and start the process with them. And I will um, do videos to help you guys follow along. I am doing this to save money. Um, and, and it is kind of fun. I mean, I'm kind of interested to see how it goes. Typically I buy new amaryllis bulbs every year and then just throw them away. So if these make it, theoretically they should be bigger and better than they were last year. And it saves me a lot of money because typically amaryllis bulbs like on the cheap side, they're anywhere from eight to $15. On the expensive side, they're up to $30 to $40 or more, depending on if you're getting like a very um, couture uh, variety. I don't tend to get the fancy varieties. I tend to buy from Tractor Supply or Home Depot or Lowe's. That's what works really well for me. And so this will be a fun process. I also think this is gonna look beautiful sitting on my back porch. So basically at this time, I'm just gonna move them to the back porch, give them a light watering, and then we'll be good to go. <laughs> Everything's covered in soil. All right, y'all, I hope you guys enjoyed to see in today's video two completely random different things unboxing the plants from garden crossing wasn't super thrilled with the size of the plants compared to the price however these are typically items that i can't find in locally so it makes sense to order them online and that that might come with a premium attached to it but i will have some videos um, following up 
getting these planted and then I'll show you how they do um, throughout the entire season. And then watching me get my amaryllis prep to go outside to grow during the rest of the spring and summer and then talking about how I'll push them into dormancy by the end of the summer into fall. So I'll have a video when I take them out of door, uh, when I bring them in from outside and push them into dormancy, I'll have a follow up video on that as well. All right, you all, as always, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Every time you like and comment, it helps grow my channel so much. And if you don't want to drop a comment, just drop an emoji. That's great too. I always enjoy seeing those as well. And be sure to check me out on my social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. As always, she's a bad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.